the Moondrop Critical Dusk. Let me start by saying I really like the way these sound. I'd give them a solid B+. Plus. However, I would not spend my 350 bucks on the Critical Dusk. I'd spend that money elsewhere. Let me explain. First of all, the list of things that I don't like about the, cr the Critical Dusk is pretty long. And the sound is not on that list. I like how they sound, but how they sound is not significant enough. It's not so good to make me overlook all the things that I don't like about the dusk. And it's just not good enough the way they sound to get past all of this stuff. So let me go through my, my laundry list of stuff. First of all, I don't like the cable. For 350 bucks from Moondrop, I'd expect a better quality cable. It's kind of jank. Uh, the $90 Aria 2 from Moondrop right here came with a beautiful four wire weave with uh, interchangeable 3.5 or 4.4 Pentagon. It's a, to me, it's a better cable than the Critical Dusk. Second of all, it's forcing me to, if I want to use the DSP and, and use the app and, and try the different EQ settings in the DSP, I have to use a USB-C. So I'm an iPhone user. So, you know, I, I have invested 100, 125 bucks or so on Amazon for a renewed Google Pixel 6. So when I need a USB-C, I can use this as a uh, as a DAP, but my preference is to just use my iPhone. So I was able to um, find a USB-C to lightning adapter. And this at least allowed me, I started out listening with just the USB-C on the Google Pixel 6. Um, and let me just say, <laughs> downloaded the the moondrop app the app is terrible it's another thing on my list of things that i don't like every single time i would plug in the usb c to the pixel 6 and load up the app the app would not recognize the dusk i would have to unplug it and plug it back in a couple of times and you would get this error error saying uh device not recognized it didn't See the, the Dusk DSP, as I think it calls it. Um, so that's the second thing that I didn't like. So with the adapter, I was able to use my iPhone and I preferred that. However, that's a bad long-term solution because look at how far this is sticking out of my lightning adapter. Now, what I don't like about that is most of us have had smartphones long enough now that we know that your charging port is a weakness vulnerability. But on for me as an audiophile, it's not the charging port that's an issue. I can do wireless charging, but it's my data port. This is how I plug in all of my mobile listening. So all of my IEMs require a functioning lightning port, the data port on my iPhone. And that just gives me anxiety about it getting hit and bumped and damaging my iPhone data port and putting in jeopardy all of my IM listening that I want to do wired. Yes, I can use my, you know, GoPods, uh, which is Bluetooth. Yes, I can use the Qtelix 5K, which is Bluetooth. And I do that sometimes, but I want to be able to plug in data. So I don't want to risk and jeopardize my, uh, my data port on my iPhone. So then continuing to, to try and make this dusk work for me in how my life and my use case is as a listener, <clears throat> I went to the, the Qtelix 5K. So the Qtelix 5K 
has in its uh, app, in the preset EQs, all of the DSP EQ settings for the, uh, the critical dusk. The default DSP, the Harman, all of them are in the presets in the Qtilix 5K, which meant I can use my iPhone and I can use a different cable. So I, I put the, the dusk on a cable that I liked, not that jank DSP cable. And I could either plug it in, actually to get the maximum, I have a, they're only 19 bucks right now on drop and I'll put a link in the, the description, but on drop, it's a 2.5 millimeter balanced and the Qtilix has 3.5 millimeter unbalanced and then also has um, a really small 2.5 millimeter fully balanced. So I put that drop 2.5 millimeter balanced cable into the, uh, the Qtilix 5K with the, uh, the critical dusk and plugging it in wired to my iPhone. So it's not USB. And I played around there with all of the DSP EQs. And I worry that that's not the same cable. It's not exactly, I don't know. I'm not a person who does EQ. So I didn't match and take a look at those preset EQs and compare them and verify that they are exactly the same as the EQ settings in the DSP cable. So I don't know if they were exactly the same. I went back and I AB listened and seemed uh, about the same to me. So that was a workaround for me to get away from this cable that to me is just a little bit thin and jank and has too much memory. And the worst thing is, I don't know how you listen, but the way I use um, IEMs is the way they were designed for musicians. I plug them in my ears, go around, and I use the cinch up in the back of the head so it pulls them tight and it holds them tight in my ears. And then I run the wire cable behind my back, underneath my shoulder, around my shoulder, and I put my phone in my pocket. And there's no cable or wire in front and they're cinched up tight in my head and they're just perfectly secure. And I can pull my phone out, look at here, I put it in my pocket. That's how I've always used IEMs. That's my strong preference because I don't like putting these in in front, maybe you do it this way. And then having this cable dangling in front of me and in my way, but this, because of the DSP and volume control here, you can't cinch it. And when you put it, when you put IEMs to the back, it needs to be cinched up firmly and securely. And that's the way IEMs were designed to be worn for musicians. And that's the way I've always worn them. And this cable tells me you're not allowed to do that. And you know what? If I'm going to spend 350 bucks on something. I don't want to be told how I can and how I cannot use it. Oh, you have to use it this way. I don't want Moondrop and I don't want Critical telling me I have to wear it in the front. I have to use the DSP cable. No, I'm an adult. I spent my money on it. Once I buy it, that's like <laughs> telling me after I buy a, a car, I can't do modifications to it and put performance tunes or change the exhaust. No, once I buy it, this is my property. I want to be able to use it and modify it the way I want to. So it was successful using the Qtilix 5K, got it onto my iPhone, onto a cable that I liked that I could wear around uh, the back of 
my head and cinch it up securely and properly. And I had access to the, pre uh, the preset EQs on here of all of the, the critical dusk EQ settings. So that was an okay workaround, but this is only 110 bucks, but it adds $110 investment to the 350 bucks to get the clinical dusk to function for me in the way I like to wear and use my IMs. So uh, that's less than ideal, I think, you know, which starts as a, a really strong value proposition because of the DSP cable. Well, you don't need a dongle DAC. You don't, you know, $110 or 250 bucks for a, a Cayenne RU6 or whatever your favorite dongle DAC. So usually if you spend 350 bucks on uh, a pair of IMs, then there's an additional investment in your dongle DAC, whatever your preference is. The, the initial value prop of the critical dusk is you don't need that. It has the, the dongle DAC amp for you, but is that a value? It's saving you money, but it's, it's too controlling. It's do it my way, period. <laughs> Use this cable, whether you like it or not, wear it this way, whether you like it or not. Use a USB-C to plug it into, whether you like it or not. Too many rules for me. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm too much of a contrarian. I'll tell you, I have a vivid memory of a when I was a child, part of my chores every week was to mow the lawn. And it was a Saturday morning and I was watching cartoons and I had decided when this cartoon episode ends, I was gonna go out and mow the front and back lawn. But with like five minutes left in the episode, my mom tucked her head, poked her head into the family room where I was watching cartoons and said, told me to go out and mow the lawn and turn off the TV and I needed to go do my chores. I'm the, just, my personality is like, if I'm about to do something and you tell me to do it, I don't want to do it because you told me to do it. I want to do it because I planned on doing it. And just because she poked her head in and told me to go do it, when the episode was over, I didn't go mow the lawn. I watched two more half hour episodes and then went and mowed the lawn. That's just uh, how my personality is, the kind of contrarian. Don't tell me what to do. I want to be in control of my life. And this critical dusk just wants to tell me what to do too much, wants to be in control. And I'm not okay with that. So I would spend my 350 bucks elsewhere. Now, I know I've been going on for a bit here just with what I don't like already. Um, oh, and because of the tuning, I cannot put them on my iFi Go Pods, which is my favorite way to just very no fuss, no muss. Yes, I'm switching to Bluetooth, but I a lot of times that's just the easiest way uh, and at least hassle way to get my beautiful music on my IEMs. So I can't do that. That bothers me. Um, what I do like. The sound, the sound on the dusk, it's at least a B plus. It's maybe a little bit more than that, but it is a little, um, I like more tonality. So I think dry might give the wrong impression, but it doesn't have the, the, the richness of, of tonality that I love. I've spoken before about, does a piano when I'm listening to it, sound like an upright acoustic piano or a eight or 10 foot acoustic grand piano. That's a different tonality. And that has nothing to do with the frequency response. These are digital and a little bit, I would like it a little richer. I don't want to say, say dry, but I like um, 
the sound. I, I'm perfectly happy with the, the sound signature. But <clears throat> it's nothing special, the sound. It's really good, but not special. You know the difference when it's like, it's good, but I'm not in love with it. And I'm not, it's not good enough to put up with all of its controlling nature that <clears throat> I'm just not going to, to put up with. So <laughs> I'm going to, because we're going on a little bit long, I'm going to skip some of the detailed comparisons. I listen compared to, <clears throat> boy, pricing, because this doesn't require a, a DAC amp to be used with. I'm like, all right, so for total price of 350, Moondrop Cato with the 190 bucks with the $110 uh, Qtelix 5K, that's you know $300 combination for 20 bucks. You can get that uh, 2.5 millimeter balanced cable on uh, on drop, and you're still 320 bucks less than the $350 investment in the uh, the critical dusk. And you can play the, you have control with the Qtelix 5K. You can play the Kato's flat. For me, flat, they can be a little bit bright, but there is about a half a dozen preset EQs for the Kato in here. And there's one in particular. There is a preset EQ done by... Uh, Ratings.com, you know, capital R T I N G S, Artings.com, ratings.com. The Moondrop Cato EQ by ratings, I love. That is my favorite. And with the ratings.com preset EQ on the the Qtelix and the Cato, at least the equal of the, the critical dusk. I'm, I'm perfectly happy with that. I would take the freedom and the save the 30 bucks over 350 bucks and all the controlling restrictions of the, the critical dusk. Yeah, I would go with the, um, the Qtelix 5K and the, the Moondrop Kato. But you know what else? The Moondrop, the Moondrop Aria 2. The Aria 2 is 90 bucks, comes with a cable, as I mentioned, with 3.5 and 4.4 Pentagon interchangeable adapter. So it's 90 bucks with a really nice cable. Again, using with the, the Qtelix 5K. The Aria 2 is doesn't have as much treble energy, and, and I don't know how it measures compared to the, the Kato, but I think it's very close. But that Moondrop Kato EQ by ratings.com on the Aria 2 sounds fantastic. 90 bucks, 110 bucks for the Qtelix, that's 200 bucks. Um, and I've actually got them on the, this is the, the cable that is the 2.5 millimeter balanced from uh, drop.com. So 110 bucks for the, Qtelix, 90 bucks for the Aria 2 and $20 for the drop 2.5 millimeter uh, balanced cable. So you're $220, $130 less than the Critical Dusk. And I'll take the Aria 2 with the, if you want to save a little money, the Aria 2 with the Qtelix 5K, <clears throat> if you're looking to spend the same amount, I would go with the the Kato and the Qtelix 5K. So dollar for dollar, I you know, and, and we're staying within the Moondrop family. I would do the Moondrop Kato or the Moondrop Aria 2 and the Qtelix 5K over three hundred and fifty dollars spent on the uh, the Critical Dusk. Now, you might say, well, it's a three hundred and fifty dollar, really well reviewed, really well liked. Moondrop Aria or uh, Moondrop 
uh, critical dusk headphone, how does it compare against other $350, let's say $300 to $400 um, price point? So I also compared them to the, uh, the Audio Hype 4, $400, <clears throat> and the Dunu uh, X Giz Audio Da Vinci, $300. So the Critical Dusk are $350. The Dunu Da Vinci's are a little bit less, $50 less. The, the Audio Hype 4, $50 bucks more. And I would rate them the best is the, the Hype 4. Then I would put second the Dunu X Giz Audio Da Vinci. Really, really nice set. And I would put the, the Critical Dusk third. But let me, let me explain why, okay? The Dusk is that beautiful girl who just isn't interesting, who has always been hot, and she's been able to get along on her looks. So she hasn't really had to develop the rest of herself. And she, she just doesn't bring anything to the conversation, and she's just not only a little bit boring, but because she's so good looking, she's been able to get her way and she's controlling because, oh, you want to be with me. So you have to do this and this and this. You have to use this cable. You have to use USB-C. You have to wear it. I'm going to tell you how to do these things if you want to be with me but I don't like being controlled and I think you're boring. I don't care if you're hot. Now, the Da Vinci, the, the Dunu, his audio, Da Vinci, it's kind of the opposite. The Da Vinci or that girl who is pretty, but it's her personality that attracts you. She's just fun to spend time with. You, every time you leave spending some time with her, you're like, you had the best time and you want to spend more time with her. She's pretty, she's fit, but it's her personality that keeps you wanting to spend time with her. And, you know, it's the classic. It's not about her profile photo. It's about her personality and how fun she is. These Da Vinci, they've got a base emphasis and they're not, they've got a personality. And when you listen, that's why I've got them on the, the Bluetooth iPod Go, uh, iFi Go Pods, because they're just fun. And on Bluetooth, I know I'm losing a little bit, but I'm getting back with this base emphasis. And I really thought I wasn't going to like the Da Vinci's that much because I'm not a base head. I don't like too much base, but it's not overdone. It just, they're fun. That's that girl. And uh, the audio hype four, they're probably the best. These are that beautiful, really fit, really smart. She's super interesting and she, you have great, interesting conversations and she challenges you. And she's not only great to look at, but <laughs> she, she keeps you on your toes. She's smart, but you know, she's not a great dancer. And sometimes you have to really get her to let her hair down and have some fun on the weekends because she works a little bit too much. <laughs> That's what the, the hype for are. I think 
in every way, these are the best of the three of the Critical Dusk and the, the Dunu Da Vinci. Uh, these are really, really good. They're a solid nine approaching 9.5. Um, but you know what? Sometimes I want to reach for the, the, the hype four. But lately, I've been reaching for the Da Vinci and just throwing on the no fuss, no fuss, you know, no fuss, no muss Bluetooth on the iFi Go pods with the Da Vinci. And they're just, they're a lot of fun. So, been taking a, a long time to go through all of this. Oh, I got to cover one other thing. So, maybe you're aware of something called confirmation bias. I'm very aware of this. And, and if you're not, confirmation bias is we believe something or we think something or we have an expectation of something. And then when we test it, our expectation is subjectively influencing our attempt at an objective evaluation. Easiest example is if you're told, hey, these are $5,000 headphones and you listen to them, you're expecting to hear a $5,000 sound quality. If you are given the keys and, and the opportunity to drive a Ferrari, you're expecting it to be the best thing that you've ever driven. Okay. <clears throat> so I admit, and I am aware that some of my review on the, the critical dusk may be my confirmation bias. Also in that I don't prefer usually class D and digital. I can find things dry and analytical and boring if they're just really good, but just clean, accurate. And I have a strong preference for DAX and amps that bring something to the signal chain that add, I, I really like class A amplification. I really like what tubes do to giving a, a tonality and a richness and a beauty doesn't change the frequency response, but changes the tonality. And I love, um, for instance, the, the, the Chord Mojo 2, that DAC amp, it's a class AB amplification, but that DAC, it, it's, it does something special. So, I'm aware that's my preference. And I, so I question myself, perhaps there is some of my own confirmation bias in, I don't like the DSP and not being able to put a, an R to R ladder DAC amp like the RU6 or the Hibby FC6, or I can't put this in and see what the Mojo 2 from Cord will do to it. I can't plug it into <clears throat> my Class A headphone amps or, or tube amps. So I just want to acknowledge um, I'm doing my best to listen, and I have AB, <laughs> I've done a lot of comparison listening. But I, I, I'm just being frank that there is the possibility because of my personal preference for some confirmation bias in my, I would clearly choose the The Audio Hype 4 and the, the Dunu uh, Giz Audio Da Vinci over the Critical Dusk. So been a bit of a long review here, but these dusks really took me through a lot of, <clears throat> put me through a lot to figure out what I really needed to know about these. But 
This is Hunter Gray, Love Music. If you've been listening this long, if you're enjoying my take in my channel, I would love to have your support by subscribing. Please, it certainly helps the algorithm if you hit like, but please subscribe. Consider supporting the channel on Patreon so I can continue to do more and better um, comparisons for you. I hope this has brought some uh, interesting and new perspectives on the critical dusk for you, but cheers for now.